Hi guys, welcome back to Father and Son Investing. We're going to continue our series about asset location, putting the right types of assets in the right types of investment accounts. We're not talking about asset allocation, that is a different topic. We're gonna get this video started today by reminding you of a video that I did two years ago in 2022. Back at that time, Vanguard had caused a stir. You can see by the Wall Street Journal headline here, the huge tax bills that came out of nowhere at Vanguard. This had to do with people keeping target date funds in their taxable accounts. Target date funds, you know, like those ones that'll say 2030, 2040, and they tend to rebalance over time. What was the issue here? Well, the issue was that there were huge net outflows for 10 Vanguard target retirement funds. You can see in here, all of the outflow here in red going on month to month during 2021. Why was this happening? Well, Vanguard had decided to create a new level for their target retirement funds. If you're familiar with Vanguard, you know that they have kind of the regular uh, fund and then they have their admiral shares for really big investors. Well, they created something similar here for target retirement funds. And so these institutional investors took their money out of one that had a larger fee and put it into similar accounts with smaller fees. That only makes sense. Why was this a problem? Well, for the people who, let, who were left behind, the, the everyday investors and smaller institutional investors that couldn't afford the admiral uh, funds, they got hit with huge tax bills because in order to move this, these funds from the regular accounts into the special accounts for the large institutional investors, they had to sell the shares in the regular accounts and then rebuy them over here. Well, when they sold all those shares, the people who stay behind in these target date funds got hit with the capital gains taxes for all of that selling that took place. Now this caused a big stir for Vanguard because people like you and me weren't expecting to get hit with these big tax bills. In fact, in Massachusetts, the government there ended up suing Vanguard and got a settlement. It wasn't huge, but it was significant. They got a settlement from Vanguard to help try to compensate these investors, at least in Massachusetts, who got hit with this big tax bill. If you're not aware of it, this did cause a lawsuit. And just recently in the Wall Street Journal, the headline here says, lawsuit over Vanguard's target date funds moves forward. These are people who are suing Vanguard for those huge tax bills that they got hit with. Now in Vanguard's defense, they did at least try to tell people not to place target date funds in their taxable accounts. They're really not designed for that. And we'll talk about the reasons for that here. There's a nice article in Morningstar by Christine Benz, which says, which investments to keep out of your taxable account? If we look at her categories to keep out of your taxable account, we're gonna see number two on the list says multi-asset funds. You could read into that target date funds as well because they hold a lot of, well, two reasons why. They hold a lot of taxable bonds and having taxable bonds in your regular taxable investment account is not a great idea. You'll see that's number one here on the list, taxable bonds and bond funds. But number two is that turnover that they tend to do, particularly target date funds again, as they go from having a high amount of equities and a smaller amount of bonds to bringing those more towards balance as one reaches retirement. While they're selling off all of those equities, that can create some tax drag there. And so having these types of entities, multi-asset funds in your taxable account is not a good idea. I'm going to let you stop the video here and look at this list, but let me just point out one other one here, and that is REITs. REITs, Real, Real Estate Investment Trusts, and REIT funds. Those, again, generate a lot of potential taxable return in a given year. In fact, 80% of what those returns are are going to be taxed at your regular tax rate. Now, if you're paying attention to that last list that I just showed you, it was quite extensive and that may leave you with the question, well, what then should I put in my taxable account? Here again is Christine Benz at Morningstar, her list for what should or could go into a person's taxable account, depending on some circumstances here. For instance, one big one, never, ever, ever to put in a IRA account is a municipal bond or a municipal bond fund. What's the reason for that? Well, these municipal bonds actually are generally going to be tax-free. They're tax-free from the federal government. And if you buy them within the state that you live in, then they're also going to be tax-free in the state that you live in. So holding them in an IRA makes no sense because 
as you may or may not know, IRA accounts, when you start to make withdrawals, those are taxed at regular income, income tax levels, whatever your current tax level is at the time you start making those withdrawals. So it, it makes no sense to hold municipal bonds or municipal bond funds in your IRA. Those should go into a taxable account. Number two on her list here says I bonds and series EE e bonds, which makes sense because you can't actually hold those in your IRA anyway. And then we've got individual stocks. Why individual stocks? That has to do with the tax treatment of capital gains. I have before you here the long-term capital gains rates for 2024. And you'll notice that all the way up to $94,000 married filing jointly, your capital gains rate, long-term capital gains rate is zero. In order to pay this long-term capital gains rate, you have to hold those individual stocks ETFs also would qualify in here for longer than 12 months. So longer than one year here. All the way up to $94,000, 0% on capital gains. So why would you wanna pay taxes in an IRA for these types of investments when you could pay potentially 0% all the way up to $94,000 and really only pay 15% all the way up to $584,000 married filing jointly? The same reasoning goes here for exchange traded funds, ETFs, and equity index funds, which are mutual funds. Uh, the tax treatment of those is different than ETFs. I actually prefer ETFs over mutual funds. And then we've got some tax managed funds. That's because those are designed to keep the taxes low. They have on here master limited partnerships. There's an important thing you need to know about master limited partnerships when it comes to keeping these in an IRA. And that has to do with unrelated business income tax. I actually held an MLP in my IRA. It was, it, MLPs are great for getting you a lot of returns. These generally are gonna to have to do with oil and gas or potentially some real estate. But if you hold those in an IRA and you get more than $1,000, or $1,000 or more in a return uh, on that investment in a calendar year, you're gonna owe what's called unrelated business income tax. Now, I never did get $1,000 in a year, but I'll tell you that at Vanguard, just the hassle that Vanguard has of having to report the fact that I have this MLP in my IRA, they were gonna charge me $300 a year just to generate this report to the government. So I rapidly got that MLP out of my IRA. Live and learn. If you like to see things in a nice chart related form, here's a nice uh, chart from Fidelity that gives you an idea of what should go in a taxable account here in dark blue, what is appropriate, meaning you know it's at least it's acceptable in the light blue, and then you know really what you shouldn't ever put in there in the gray here. So again, just to reemphasize the point, municipal bonds, do not put them in tax deferred or tax exempt accounts. It just doesn't make sense. They're best in a taxable account. Again, we've got equity securities, ETFs, tax managed mutual funds. They include in here, at least as appropriate, real estate investment trusts, but really ideally kept in a tax deferred or tax exempt account. In this case, the tax deferred is we're talking about IRAs and 401ks, tax exempt, the Roth IRA. This was kind of fast and furious today. I hope it was helpful information for you. Please give us a thumbs up if it was. I'll leave some links to the different articles that I have on this topic for taxable accounts in the, in the notes below. Go ahead and feel free to peruse those. Until next time, enjoy your investing.